السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. I'm so honored and privileged to be in your presence here today. And I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this opportunity. An opportunity that we get together for the sake of Allah. To remind ourselves of Allah. To know more of Allah. And to understand the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better. Especially during times in which the Muslim world the Muslim Ummah, the Muslim nation, is encountering challenges, whether to be in the West, in the East, South, North, anywhere. And it reminds me of the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he says, kama ala that this whole world will unite against you how a group of men will get together to eat from one plate. So when the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anum, the companions radiallahu ta'ala anum, heard this from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they were shocked. They were shocked to hear that one day the Muslim world will be under severe attacks and severe criticism. So the only reply and response they had to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was is for them to ask and say, O oh, Messenger of Allah, nahnu Is it because we are small in number that people will manage to attack us and people will manage to get the most out of us? Is it because of we are small in number? So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replies and he says, La, la, no. Nay, bal antum qalil, bal antum kathir. No, you'll be so big in your number, you wouldn't be small in your number. You'll become like a froth of the ocean that has no weight to it. So it's not because you are small in your number, it is because you are so big in your number, but your size, your amount, your volume does not give you that weight. But back then, during the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, their size was so small, but they were so heavy in their weight. بَلْ أَنْتُمْ كَثِيرٌ You'll be so big in your number. وَلَكِنْ غُثَاء كَغُثَاءِ السَّيْلِ But you'll be so weak. You'll be so weak even though you are big in your numbers, but you are weak. You are weak in your status. وَلَكِنْ غُثَاء كَغُثَاءِ السَّيْلِ and you'll become like a froth of the ocean. وَلَيَنْزِعَنَّ اللَّهُ الْمَهَابَةَ مِنْ قُلُوبِ عَدُوِّكُمْ وَلَيَقْذِفَنَّ فِي قُلُوبِكُمُ الْوَهَنَ Then the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continues to say, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take out of your enemy's heart, Allah azza wa jalla will take out of your enemy's heart your respect, your honor, your honor, your respect will be taken out of your enemy's heart. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cast in your heart as Muslims the wahan, the disease of wahan. So they said, our oh, messenger of Allah, what's wahan? What's this disease of wahan? So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Hubbu dunya wa karahiyatul maut. The love of this dunya and the hatred of death. So you become so inclined, you become so attached to this world, and you'll disconnect yourself from the true world, and that's the hereafter. So now I could depict, I could imagine what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had mentioned 14 centuries ago. The situation of the Muslim ummah, the situation of the Muslim world, in which we are becoming under continuous attack, continuous criticism, whether to be in our values, in our morals, in our principles, in what we believe in, in what we adhere in, and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam draws that image for us. The entire world will unite against you and attack you. The entire world will unite against you and defame you. 
The entire world will unite against you and criticize you. But that goes back to our responsibility. Before we start pointing the fingers at someone else, why don't we start pointing the fingers at ourselves? Why are we in that position? Why are we in a position where anyone can continue attacking the Muslim world and attacking Islam as a religion, attacking the Quran as the sacred book of the Muslim world, and attacking the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? It is because of our weakness. Our weakness led us to be in a position where we become in a very vulnerable position that anyone can speak ill of Islam and Muslims. And that weakness comes, number one. Number one is our disconnection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not being connected to Allah the Almighty. Not being connected to Allah the Creator. Not being connected to Allah the Master. So we'd rather be connected to the creation of Allah before we are connected to the Creator. No, when we reconnect ourselves to the Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make ease and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make everything easy upon us. So let us reconnect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and know that at the end of the day, the affairs of the Muslims and the affairs of the world and the affairs of the universe are in the hands of Allah and none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whatever Allah azza wa jal wills, it will happen. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees will take place. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants will happen. But Allah azza wa jal wants us to be connected to him. So if we want to see a change from Allah, well, the change comes from us because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it very clear in the Quran al-Kareem. Inna Allah la yughayru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayru ma bi anfusim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not change the condition of people until people themselves change their condition. So if you want that condition to be changed and I want that condition to be changed and we want everything around us to be changed, then we need to change ourselves. I need to change myself. You need to change yourself. And we need to change within us. Because the problem is internal more than external. And that brings me to the second point. And that is our division. Our disunity is making us so weak. Our division is killing us. Our division is destroying us. In which we are so divided. So against one another, they would rather put effort against one another than putting the effort for each other. We rather put the effort in trying to undermining one another than respecting each other. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Hold fast unto the rope of Allah and the rope of Allah is Islam together, collectively and united and never ever divide. So we need to be united. We need to relinquish and walk away from any of the differences that we might have. And if we do, we need to overcome them and respect each other. Especially during these times. Especially during these times. These times of trials. These times of predicaments. These times of tests that every single Muslim can see it, sense it, touch it, feel it. We are encountering hardships, challenges. But we need to be united so we could respond together. We need to be together so we could resist it together. We need to stand by one another so we could stand firmly and strongly against anything that we find to be unjust or wrong. My brother and my sister in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it very clear in the Quran al-Kareem. أَمْ حَسِبْتُمْ أَن تَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةَ وَلَمَّا يَأْتِكُمْ مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ خَلَوْا مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ مَسَّتُمُ الْبَأْسَاءُ وَالضَّرَّاءُ وَزُلْزِلُ حَتَّى يَقُولَ الرَّسُولُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعَهُ مَتَى نَصْرُ اللَّهُ أَلَا إِنَّ نَصْرَ اللَّهِ قَرِيمٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran and Kareem, do you think that you'll acquire the Jannah before you experience what the previous nations before you had experienced? In which the ground was shaken under them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested them and tested them and tested them until the Prophet 
And the people with the Prophet, the companions and the disciples with the Prophet, they said, Mata Nasrullah, when is the victory of Allah? So Allah Azza wa Jal replies and He says, The victory of Allah is near. Yes. Yes. The victory of Allah is near. But that's after we face trials. That's after we face tests. That's after we unite Allah who give us the victory. That's after we get together and start respecting each other. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant us victory. But what victory are we talking about? When we are so turned against each other and continue to fight one another and undermine each other and look down at each other just because I belong to a particular school of thought or just because I belong to a particular mosque or just because I belong to a particular organization. Our fight now, our resistance is becoming for the group that I belong to, for the school of thought that I belong to, for the jama'ah I belong to. I belong to Islam. I belong to Islam, I belong to the Muslim Ummah. These jama'at, these groups, these centers, these ideologies that we carry, these are only platforms and avenues. At the end of the day, my allegiance is to Islam. My allegiance is to the Muslim world. My allegiance to the Muslim community. My allegiance to the Muslim nation. So whatever benefit I can bring to the Muslim world, I should be part of that benefit. And whatever harm, I could refrain away or keep away from the Muslim world. I should be at the forefront of this. It is a test. It is a trial. Wherever you look at any Muslim country you look at, you find that the Muslim world is going through hardships, trials and predicaments. And these are the times that we need to unite together to try and support, to try and help to try and alleviate some of that pressure that the Muslim world and some of our Muslim brothers and sisters are encountering. But we need, we need to do that with wisdom. Because part of the challenges that we are encountering is the challenge of extremism that we encounter as a Muslim world. People from our own skin, people from within us, people from the Muslim world coming out, killing under the name of Islam. And not only killing non-Muslims, killing Muslims, non-Muslims, children, women, killing everyone, rampaging on everyone. That's a challenge within itself. Then we need to all resist that as a Muslim world, as a Muslim nation. And not to allow people like this to infiltrate into our religion, into our ummah and speak on our behalf. My brothers and my sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, do people think they'll be left alone before they are tested? Well, being a Muslim is also being part of the trials that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test you with. That Allah azza wa put you through different trials and different tests. It comes part of our package as a Muslim. You can't expect to say, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammadan abdu rasulun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't test you. Allah Azza wa Jal makes it very clear in the Quran Kareem that part of your Iman, part of your Islam is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test you. Part of your adherence to Islam is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put us all through different tests. Sometimes it could be an individual test where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test you individually. Allah Azza wa Jal will test you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test you within yourself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test you with your family. Allah azza wa jalla will test you with your wealth. That's a test that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test you with as an individual person. But there's also a collective test that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test us as an ummah. And I want to focus on the collective test. The trials and the tests that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test us as an ummah, as a Muslim community, as a Muslim world, as a Muslim nation. That Alhamdulillah, what brings us together here is Islam. What unites us is Islam. What brings between the black and white is Islam. What brings between the poor and the rich is Islam. What brings between the one that's living in the east and the one that's living in the west is Islam. So I want to focus more on the collective test that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing us. Because that's also part of it. And Allah Azza wa made it very clear. Do you think? That you'll just say, I'm a mu'min before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests you. 
Do you think that Allah Azza wa will just let you go and say, I'm a mu'min, I'm a believer, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't even put you through any test? Well, it's part of your iman, it's part of your Islam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test. It's part of the package. It's part of that journey. That you'll be tested. And I'll be tested. And we will all be tested. And right now, we as a Muslim world, we are being tested. And it's important for us to revise and look into how can we counter these tests. And as I mentioned, it goes back to number one, reconnecting to Allah Azza wa Jal. Number two, to be united. We need to unite. And these are the desperate times that we need to unite. And we need to overcome the differences that we have. And the disagreements that we have and say, you know what? Islam is bigger than any issue that I disagree with. With you on or anything else. Islam is bigger than that. What's between me and you is Islam and Islam is bigger than that. And that's why you and I are going to hold on to Islam. And defend Islam. And protect Islam with whatever we've got. But we need to overcome our differences. We need to move forward. We need to overcome any disagreement that we have. And move forward inshallah. That's a commitment that every single one of us must commit to. That my bigger picture is Islam. It's not the center that I belong to or the organization that I follow or the jama'ah that I adhere to. My objective is Islam. That's it. I look at it in a general form. I look at it in a broader perspective. And for that, I'll do anything that Islam wants me to do. And number one thing Islam wants you to do right now is for you to unite with your brothers and sisters. And overcome any disagreement or differences that you have with them. Put it all behind you because now you've got something bigger. And that is upholding Islam. Number three, my brothers and my sisters, is that we need to accept the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue to test us. And we cannot escape the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue to test us. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested the prophets and the messengers, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested the companions and the disciples of the prophets and the messengers, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue to test us to the day of judgment. Because we struggle to understand that. We expect that just by me, being a Muslim, that's it. Everything will go smooth. Everything will go sweet. Everything will go easy. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it very clear. He is the one that created death and life to test you. Who is the best of doer amongst you? So our existence on the face of this earth is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to test us. So we need to accept the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us because he wants to test us. And being a Muslim is also being someone who will experience and encounter tests. I believe that's one of the issues that sometimes we struggle to understand. We expect everything to go smooth. We want it more easier than what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa had got it. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and not any test, but the tests and the trials that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam experienced, no one before him or after him had ever experienced it and will never ever experience it. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even himself, he says about himself, that I am the Prophet and the Messenger of Allah. I am the most tested human being and servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah Azza wa had ever tested. It's part of the package. We need to accept the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing us and Allah Azza wa will continue to test us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue to put us in a test and in a trial. But it's about us what we do in return. It's our reaction towards it. And sometimes we react positively and sometimes unfortunately we react negatively. Sometimes we react in a proper way, in a proper Islamic way, and sometimes we react in an improper way. We need to react in a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to react because that's also part of the test. Your reaction towards that test. What do you do? What do you do when you see or you experience or you encounter a test? What's your reaction towards that? And you see some people are reacting in a way that pleases Allah azza wa jal. 
And at the same time, you see, people are reacting in a wrong way. People are reacting in a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not pleased from. Such as what I mentioned before, killing innocent people for the sake of upholding Islam. That's not a way they're going to please Allah azza wa jal. You want to react, react the way Allah azza wa jal wants you to react. React in a way that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had reacted. And I know it is a confusing time. Even the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaks about this time and he says, يُسْبِحُ الْحَلِيمُ فِي حَيْرَانِ there will come a time where even the most wisest person, the most wisest person will be so confused. The most intelligent person will be so confused. The most knowledgeable person will be so confused. But that's also part of the test. We need to contain ourselves, restrain ourselves and be smart how we'll deal with those matters. Because as we all experience tests and tests and tests, Islam is under attack. The Muslim community is under attack. Muslims around the world have been persecuted, displaced, killed. Children have been orphaned. Women have been widowed. And more and more and more. What's my stance to this? What's my position on that? My position is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants me to do. What well, Allah Azza wa Jal wants you to do, He wants you to react. But Allah Azza wa Jal wants you to react with wisdom and smartness, not stupidity. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to react in a way that pleases Him. Not in a way that pleases me, not in a way that pleases you. Because a lot of the times we react in a particular way, thinking that we are pleasing Allah. But the reality is we are pleasing ourselves, we are pleasing our desires. For that we need to be so vigilant and smart how we deal with those matters. We need to be wise and intelligent how we deal with those matters because it is a confusing time and it is a very difficult time, a very challenging time. But alhamdulillah, when you see a beautiful gathering like this gathering, brothers and sisters are getting together for the sake of Allah. This is a good sign that alhamdulillah, there is a lot of hope and a lot of goodness in this ummah. And that's the fourth thing, never lose hope. Never ever lose hope. لا تيأسوا من روح الله. As Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Quran Kareem, do not lose hope in what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala had promised. Don't lose hope. Do not lose hope that one day, insha Allah, that pressure will be alleviated. That challenge we will overcome it. Those issues that we are confronted with. And encountering, inshallah, will be long gone. Don't lose hope, but depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Reliance on Allah azza wa is very important. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did. To rely on Allah azza wa jal. At-tawakkul ala Allah. Have reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and know that everything is in the hands of Allah. And all affairs are in the hands of Allah. And nothing will happen beside the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says to Abdullah ibn Abbas, وَعْلَمْ لَوْ أَنَّ الْأُمَّةَ اجْتَمَعَتْ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَنْفَعُوكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يَنْفَعُوكَ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ لَكَ وَلَوْ اجْتَمَعَ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَضُرُّوكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يَضُرُّوكَ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكَ If this whole world gathers together and unites to benefit you with a matter that Allah Azza wa Jal did not decree that will never ever benefit you. And if this whole world gathers together and unites to harm you over a matter that Allah Azza wa did not decree upon you. That will never ever happen. It's all in the hands of Allah. But never lose hope in Allah. All, always have strong hopes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And know that Allah Azza wa will fulfill his promise. And what's the, what's the promise of Allah Azza wa that he'll fulfill? هُوَ الَّذِي أَرْسَلْ رَسُولَ بِالْهُدَى وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ لِيُظْهِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّهِ He is the one that sent... His prophet and messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the deen of Islam for Islam to prevail. For Islam to prosper. For Islam to thrive and grow. And as much as attacks, Islam will experience, Islam will continue to grow and thrive and prosper because the one that's looking after Islam is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah. Allah is the one that's taking care of the affairs of Islam. 
Allah is the one that's taking care of Islam. Allah is the one that's taking care of all the matters that are pertaining Islam. We only have a very minimal role when it comes to Islam. And if it was on us, if Islam was depending on us and everything to do with Islam was revolving around us, Allahu A'lam how far Islam will go. But subhanallah, you continue to see Islam thriving and growing and prospering. Why? Because Islam is looked after by Allah. Islam is taken care of by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah Azza wa had promised and Allah Azza wa Jalla will fulfill His promise and the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be fulfilled now or later or soon in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Islam will prevail. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 1,400 years ago when he was one man, one man alone by himself in which he defied all odds, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and challenged anyone when he was by himself in Mecca. He says, alayhi salatu wa salam, sayablughu hadha al-amru ma balagha al-layl wa al-nahar. The Islam will reach everywhere the way day and night had reached everywhere. And as you could see it right now, 1,400 years after the Prophet, alayhi salatu wa salam, Islam had reached everywhere the way day and night had reached everywhere. By the will of Allah, azza wa jalla. By the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Islam had reached everywhere. In the east, in the west, south or north, you go anywhere around the world, and Islam is there. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants it to be there. But all this comes with a lot of trials. All this comes with a lot of predicaments, with a lot of tests that Allah azza wa jalla wants to see. لِيُمَحِّصَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَيَمْحَقَ الْكَافِرِينَ A test that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue to test us. A trial that Allah azza wa jalla will continue to trial us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala differentiates. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will differentiate between the true believers from the weak believers. Which side of the fence do you want to be on? Which side of the fence do you want to be at? From the weak believers or the strong believers? Make that choice today. You want to be on the side of the strong believers. The side of those who continue to stand up for Islam. The side of those that will never break. No matter what trial they encounter. The side of those that will continue to call for unity among the Muslim world. The side of those who think with wisdom and knowledge. When it comes to any matter, when it comes to Islam. My brothers and my sisters, there's one thing that no one can disagree over. And that is that the Muslim world is encountering challenges. But we need to overcome those challenges together, inshallah. We need to overcome those challenges united by Ibnillah. We need to overcome those challenges when we work with one another by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to overcome them. We need to unite. We need to reconnect to Allah. We need to deal with matters with wisdom and intelligence. We need to deal with matters with knowledge. We need to react with wisdom and knowledge. We need to be there for one another. We need to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be with Allah azza wa jal because the only help that we have is Allah azza wa jal. No other help. Don't expect any help from anyone. The only assistance that you've got is Allah Azza wa Jal. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us out of this trial. Allah Azza wa Jal is teaching us out of this test. He is teaching us to depend on Him. If there's a lesson that we need to learn from this trial, if there's a lesson that we need to learn from these tests that we're all encountering, is to know that if we want to depend on anyone, it's to depend on Allah Azza wa Jal. If you were ever to ask anyone, ask Allah. And you'll find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there for you. Supplicate to Allah and ask Allah azza wa jal. Supplicate to Allah and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy upon us and upon the Muslim world. These are the times that we need to reconnect to Allah and depend on Him and ask Him. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy upon every single one of us. Make it easy upon every single Muslim. And every single Muslim country and every, everyone in the world. 
Because we are encountering hardships. That's a reality. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam encountered a lot more harder hardships that sallallahu alayhi wa sallam managed to go through. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam managed to succeed. Him and the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum. If we talk about attacks on Islam, we'll remember the times and the days of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam. When him and the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum were persecuted by his own people just because they said, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. That while the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is one day leaning his back to the Kaaba, one of the companions comes to him and he says to him, Oh Messenger of Allah, why don't you ask Allah to make it easy upon us? You have that connection with Allah. You have that open line of connection with Allah. Why don't you ask Allah Azza wa to make it easy upon us? So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got up and he was angry and he said, By Allah. By Allah, he used to be to the people before you. With the so persecuted, they used to be tortured, tormented, until one of them will be brought forward and he will be chopped into two pieces. Nothing will turn away from Allah Azza wa Jal. And another one will be combed by iron combs, ripping his flesh from his bones to turn him away from Islam and nothing will turn him away from Islam. That's how persevering steadfast they were. And then the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Allah had promised me victory and Allah azza wa jal will fulfill his promise and Islam will rise and Islam will dominate and Islam will grow and Islam will prosper. Then the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, وَلَكِنَّكُمْ قَوْمٌ تَسْتَعْجِلُونَ You are people in Russian hurry. You are always hasting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's victory. You rush. You want it to happen right now. Ya Allah, make it easy. Where's your effort? What are you giving in return? What sacrifices are you sacrificing in return? Ya Allah, alleviate the pressure of the Muslim world. Well, Allah Azza wa wants to see sacrifices in return. What sacrifices are we sacrificing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? وَلَكِنَّكُمْ قَوْمٌ تَسْتَعْجِلُونَ Indeed, you are people in Russian hurry. You want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's victory, but you don't want to strive for it. You want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's opening, but you don't want to strive for it. Well, if you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's victory, and if I want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's victory and opening, and if you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's victory and opening, you and I need to strive for it. And today is the day that we strive for it together, collectively united, according to the way of Allah azza wa jalla, the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to acquire the pleasure of Allah. And not to be those that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions, وَلَكِنَّكُمْ قَوْمٌ تَسْتَعْجِلُونَ You are people in rush and hurry, you just want it, but you don't want to sacrifice for it. You, you don't want to work, but you want to get paid. You don't want to work, but you want to get paid. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see some work. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see some effort. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to take initiative. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to see that we'll do something for His pleasure. Allah wants to see from us that we are willing to sacrifice. So take an initiative. And think about what contribution are you contributing to Islam? What sacrifice are you willing to make for Islam? And if there is one sacrifice that we need to make for Islam right now, it's for us to reconnect to Allah Azza wa Jal and unite. And relinquish and refrain away from anything that we might disagree over. Start understanding one another. Open that line of communication. We've got bigger issues internally for us to be concerned over the external issues and I'm not here trying to ignore the fact yes there are external issues but I believe there are bigger internal issues that we need to focus on than the external issues and alhamdulillah this conference is one of those signs that we are willing to get together for the sake of Allah and living in such a beautiful country like Malaysia in which mashallah it's becoming a leading country in promoting Islam a leading country in tolerance and harmony. Alhamdulillah, this is a country that we need to pride ourselves on and keep the Malaysian Muslim community united with one another and not to contribute to any division. But we need to contribute into peace and love with one another. These are the times of difficulty, but at the same time, these are the times of sacrifices. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see, what do you give in return? What do I give in return? What are we willing to do? Because a lot of the times when we're under a lot of pressure, we don't think right. And this is the time that we really need to think right. 
think with intelligence, think with wisdom, think appropriately, think the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to think, think the way the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa used to think. My brothers and my sisters, am hasibtum an tadkhulu al-jannata wa lamma ya'lam illahu alladhina jahadu minkum wa ya'lam as-sabirin. Once again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, do you think that you'll enter the Jannah and achieve the Jannah before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees those who are willing to sacrifice for his sake and those who are patient? These are the days of sacrifice and these are the days of patience. We are living in days of trials and we are living in days of tests, but these are also the days of sacrifices and these are the days of patience. So let us together sacrifice to please Allah and let us together be patient for the sake of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fulfill His promise. And the promise of Allah azza wa jal is near. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ala inna nasr Allahi qareeb. Indeed, the victory of Allah is near. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those who sacrifice sincerely for the sake of Allah. Who are patient for the sake of Allah. Who give for the sake of Allah. Who take for the sake of Allah. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, They are the true believers. They are the true mu'mins. Those who give for Allah, take for Allah, sacrifice for Allah, think for Allah, react for Allah. They are the true believers. We need to be from amongst the category of the true believers. Those who are willing to give for Allah, take for Allah, sacrifice for Allah, think for Allah, react for Allah. My brothers and my sisters, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once again to unite us. Because our division is our weakness. I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to strengthen our bond and foster our brotherhood and sisterhood. And get the Muslim Ummah united together to defend one another and stand for each other. It's our weakness that allowed others, that allowed those who are trying to undermine Islam to infiltrate into us. But when we unite and become strong as the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum were, as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Sahaba were, no one can infiltrate in between our lines. They are our examples. Their sacrifice, their understanding, their reliance of Allah azza wa jal is our great example for that. Let us follow their footsteps and follow their track, follow their path into acquiring success in this world and the hereafter, victory from Allah in this world and the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst them. Ameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Brothers and sisters, Jazakumullah khairan for attending today's conference. May Allah reward you. May Allah azza wa strengthen you and strengthen us all and make us from amongst those who will acquire the pleasure of Allah in this world and the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you, protect this blessed and beautiful country, Malaysia. And the people of this country, Amin Ya Rabbil Alameen, Jazakumullah Khaira, Subhanak Allahum, Bahamdik Nashadu an la ilaha illa ant, Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.